So Canon recently announced the development of EOS R3. It's almost flagship camera that's gonna be powered by its very first backside illuminated stacked CMOS sensor. Now that sounds really cool, but then it came out that the sensor is going to be 24 megapixels and the internet lost its mind. Now this got me thinking though, what's our obsession with megapixels? I've fallen victim to it myself. I bought the R5 instead of the R6, mainly because of the higher resolution. So is 24 megapixels enough? Is it enough for what? Is it enough for Instagram or LinkedIn, a business card, a website? What? This is where I had to devise a test. So here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna take three Canon cameras with a similar resolution to the R3, and I'm going to take a raw file off of each one, the same image, translate it into a 16-bit TIFF file, and then print a gigantic image on my Canon Pro Series 2100. Once I get them blown up nice and big, I'll be able to take a look at them and see what really is the difference. Now, before we get started, don't forget to hit like, subscribe, hit the notification bell, and also check out my podcast that comes out every week, and I co-host it with my friend Boo Ray Perry. Link to that in the description. Now, let's get started. First up, my little punk in the EOS RP. This is a full frame 26 megapixel camera. That's very, very similar to what the R3 is gonna be, and that's gonna be the biggest sensor and the highest resolution camera we're gonna to use today. Next up is the EOS M50. This is my walk around mirrorless camera. It's very small. It's got an APS-C size sensor weighing in at about 24 megapixels. So this is gonna be a little bit less than the R3. Now you might say, well, it's an APS-C sensor. It's not fair. Yeah, it's not fair to the M50. A smaller sensor has less room for all the stuff that goes on the sensor, so the same amount of megapixels on a smaller sensor should theoretically yield a lower quality image than on a full frame sensor. So if I can make that look good, then the R3 is gonna be great. Finally, my daughter's camera, the DSLR Canon EOS Rebel SL1. This has an 18 megapixel APS-C sensor, and if I can make that look great, there is gonna be nothing to worry about with the megapixels on the R3. So I took some random crap from around my studio and I made a little set. Now I set up my lights and then a tripod. Now each camera is using about a 70 millimeter equivalent focal length, f8, 125th of a second at 125 ISO. This should give me as close as possible to the same image. The main difference is gonna be the depth of field on the APS-C cameras. It's gonna be a little greater than it is on the full frame camera, but overall we should get about the exact same image. After I took the exact same photo with each camera, I took the files onto my laptop, used Adobe Bridge to convert them to 16-bit TIFF files without making any other adjustments. Then I used Canon's professional print layout software to print them directly to the Pro 2100, took them out of the printer and laid them across the top side by side. Now here's the crazy part. Once I got them all laid out on the ground side by side, the color, even on auto white balance, was so consistent and the quality of the image was so consistent, even at 18, 24, and 26 megapixels, I had a really hard time telling the difference between which one was which. Now these prints were each 24 by 36 inches long, two feet by three feet. So they were not small prints. I got up right on them and looked at the focus, the resolution, the dynamic range, the depth of field, all of it. And in fact, it was the depth of field that gave it away between the APS-C sensor cameras and the full frame, but really, that was about it. So I took an 18 megapixel DSLR that's several years old and I used it to print a 36 inch print and it looked fantastic. So honestly, what's the point? First of all, I'd wager to say that most people shooting out there aren't making 36 inch prints of their work. And even if they are, a 24 megapixel sensor in the R3 would be more than enough to do that as I showed with three cameras with similar resolution that are all a lot older than the R3 is going to be with older technology. Now, it really isn't about the megapixels as much as it is about the quality of the pixels you get on the sensor. And in a higher end camera, theoretically, you should get larger photo sites or diodes on the sensor that collect more light, have a higher dynamic range, and do a better job of converting red, green, and blue light into that digital language and make an incredible image out of it. So the larger the sensor with fewer of those on it, theoretically should be a better image quality, or at least there's potential for better image quality there. So you may not get the resolution you were hoping for, but the quality of the pixels should be just right. 
Now the R3 seems to me to be geared towards sports, wildlife, and photojournalists. And one of the things that these types of photographers do is take a ton of images, which means a smaller file is less information, faster shooting, better buffering, and not only that, a speedier workflow, especially when 99% of the images are just gonna end up somewhere online. So what would you need 45 megapixels for? This R3 is built to go fast, like really, really fast. So it remains to be seen if the quality of it is gonna be up to snuff, but the bottom line is the megapixels don't matter as much as the quality of the pixels that are on the sensor. So really when you're shopping for a camera, any camera, the real question is, is what's the best camera for you? Are you a sports photographer, photojournalist, wildlife photographer that's looking for a fast workflow and a blazing fast camera? Then maybe the R3 is gonna be your jam. If you're a landscape photographer shooting at low ISOs most of the time and you're gonna want as much detail as possible, then the R5 could absolutely do it for you. What if you're a wedding photographer and you need two bodies and you need to save a little bit of money? The R6 might be exactly what you need. So don't sweat the megapixels. It really doesn't matter as much as the quality of the pixels that you actually get. And don't forget that the camera doesn't matter as much as the person behind it. Don't forget to like, subscribe, hit the notification bell. Thanks for watching my experiment. Let me know what you think in the comments. I'd love to hear your thoughts. Or maybe you can say, Gary, you're an idiot. I know exactly why I need all these megapixels. And maybe you do. Let me know. Talk to you later.